Hello, beautiful people. It's nighttime here because uh, I'm recording this a little late. So I decided I'd finally recharge my old Android. Look at how old that thing is. It's so nasty. Um, but because I needed to get some contacts off of there to put on my beautifully cut iPhone type thing. Yeah, yeah, that little thing over there. But look at my background. It look look. It's well, you can't really see it very well. My autofocus is like freaking me out right now. But it's it's Miles Teller and Shailen Woodley from Divergent. I'm pretty sure that was when they were recording Spectacular Now, though. And I'm working on my book. Well, it's actually kind of like a story that I'm writing that I had a bunch of crap to go with, and I was like, let's go with it. It's like a Grey's Anatomy kind of story. I was like, let's see what happens if I do this with the characters and everything. And I was like, if this were to happen on the show, I'm pretty sure that everything would turn around right now. But I'm pretty sure they're not going to do that. Just because it'll ruin the show. But um, now I'm getting into it with my friend because I didn't tell her that I was engaged. Whatever. And so she, now she's like threatening suicide and crap. Because I kept a secret from her. And I was like, if everybody tried to commit suicide with one, one of their friends didn't tell him a secret, we'd all be dead. And there's a lot of things that she hasn't told me either, so I'm not the only one keeping secrets in this relation, in this friendship, okay? Okay. So apparently it's all in my head that she wants to go and off herself. And I was like, don't you put that on me. You're making this decision, so I'm not about to go and take the blame for you going and cutting yourself and committing suicide. I learned a long time ago that suicide is not the option. It's never the option. I, I'm handling my depression. Music helps me. Um, I was out with her family this weekend, actually, on Saturday, and at one point I just I had to go down to the pool and just sit in the hot tub for half an hour listening to uh, Tommy Prophet's new album, Deeper, because it's, there's not very Music cheers me up. I don't know why, but it, it pulls me out of it and pulls me back from the ledge, which is good. I don't like, I hate being on that ledge. I hate thinking those thoughts. And oh, let me just have a serious talk with you for a minute. Let me put you down. You can't see me? Oh no! Don't you jump up there, you jerk. Okay. So let me just have a serious conversation with you for a second. Um, my depression is, it's proven, it's clinical. Um, my pretty kitty is joining me on the bed. Come here. Look at him, he's adorable. Anyway. Um, but no, it's it's something I've learned to deal with. Cause like when I I get those fits of depression, I'm I'm really down and I don't like to be around people. Because I mean, if I am going to go and try to commit suicide, then I don't want no. My cat's trying to get up here. I don't want to be have people around. I don't like people knowing what I'm feeling at that exact moment, so I just go off by myself and I try to make myself feel better. And music tends to help with that. But it puts me on this, like, ledge. No! But it, it puts me on... It's like I'm standing on a ledge and back here... Like, this is the ledge. And here I am, up at the, the top here. And down this way it's just a drop. We're, that's that's death, and contemplate. That's all the dark thoughts down here. And then there's land back this way. When I listen to music, I I take a step back. I take a couple steps back, and I'm not on the ledge anymore. I'm still there on the cliff, but I'm not. I I will never get off that cliff. Is what I'm getting at. I'm never. There's. You, you learn to handle depression. You, you don't get over it. You, you, there's no cure for it, obviously. But you learn to live with it. And you learn different ways to help yourself. Like, I, I have friends that I, I'm talking to and I'm helping through right now, actually. One of them, she's, she was like me. I'm a year clean from cutting myself. I'm so proud of myself. And yet for a year, I've managed to keep the thoughts at bay and step back from that from that ledge, but remain on the cliff. But 
I have a friend of mine who, she's on the ledge constantly. She's right there. She has not found a solution to pull herself back from the ledge a little bit. So she's always standing right on the edge. And there have been a couple times that she's fallen over the edge. But I feel like when you fully fall over the edge is when you decide to end your life. That is when you've decided that there is no way back. Because right now, she's like standing on the edge, but she has a bungee cord attached to her. And so every time she jumps off into that cliff, she bounces, she dives into those thoughts and bounces right back up. She dives into cutting, which is what she does. And she dives in, she, she cuts, and then she bounces right back up. And she's happy again. And I've been trying to figure out ways to help her. Um, my, my friend, um, Josh Ramsey, he's trying to help me as well, help her. Because he's been there before as well. Um, he's been there with the, the cutting and the trying to commit suicide and everything. And so he's trying to help her too. But, I don't know. There, there are some days when I have that bungee cord on and I jump over the ledge. I've never committed into cutting again, so... There are some days that I do dive over that ledge and those thoughts come back and I'm like, nobody cares about me and if I end it right now, nobody's going to care. But then I put on something that makes me happy or makes me think for just a minute of the things that I could do in my life and I bungee back up onto the top and I step back and... I don't know, it's amazing when you can pull yourself back from that ledge, but when you can't, once you've gone through with it, like not committing suicide obviously, because once you go through with it you don't feel anything afterwards, but once you come back up onto that ledge from like cutting or those deep thoughts, then it feels like you've accomplished something when you step back from that ledge. It feels like you're not completely broken. Which is how most of us view our, ourselves, is that we're broken. That we were made imperfect, but if you look at the reality of it, we're all imperfect. I mean, the, I think the best thing that came out of my depression and all of the other things that have wrong with me, I want to be a doctor. I want to help people get through the same thing that I'm going through. I'm not going to be a psychologist, obviously. That's stupid. Those are doctors. Those are overpaid therapists who try to keep you from committing suicide. It doesn't always work, though. They just ease you into, the after into it. And being in a mental facility, I've never been in one, but a friend has. Two of my friends have. And they said that it's uh, it's not very fun. You actually think more about committing suicide in a mental facility than you would outside of it. So, I don't know. Anyway, serious talk, over. Um, so I thought I'd just update you guys about what was going on. And I'll see you guys tomorrow.